Okay, I probably look a little crazy right now, but that's just how important it is to get this message out. It's about mm, going on seven o'clock. I got up at five this morning um, needing to go and talk to the Lord, needing to spend some time with my father in prayer. And I came out here. I just, something was bothering me um, between me and my husband. And I didn't want to communicate it to my husband yet because I knew that it would only end up in an argument because I was so irritated. So I was so in my emotions that I knew we wouldn't be able to communicate effectively to each other. So instead of me forcing a conversation that I knew would not go well, I went and had a conversation with the one who understands both me and him and the one who could give me the best advice on my marriage because he brought us together in the first place and he holds us together. So, and the one who knows us both the best, the one who created us. So I prayed and yes, I've been praying out here since five o'clock and like I said, it's almost seven, but that's not the issue. The amount of time that I'm spending praying really isn't the issue, okay? But um, just to let you know, you know, when I started praying, I was so frustrated that I was yelling. Now, mind you, I'm out here in the car in the garage, so I was I didn't disturb anybody in the house. I didn't wake anybody up. But um, that was my emotions when I started the prayer. And by now, two hours later, and I, I didn't spend the whole two hours praying about how upset I was with my husband, okay? <laughs> I'll get more into some of the other stuff I talked about in a minute. But um, I went from that to now that I'm pretty much done with my prayer and I am now going to go work out and start my day for my business, that now my mood is completely different. And now I don't even feel like it's a, a matter that I need to discuss with my husband because I have cast my cares onto the Lord for he cares for me. And that I know that God will communicate with my husband and talk with him and encourage him, teach him, guide him, give him the wisdom needed so that when it is the divine time, the right timing for he and I to talk about, you know, the the subject at hand, that we can do it in a loving way. I... I've had enough arguments with my husband in the past. <laughs> and I am at a point now that I have this revelation that I just had to share about the fact that you don't have to talk while you're emotional because it doesn't, it typically doesn't end well. And I knew that I was very emotional and I also knew it wasn't that big of a deal. Now, there are some other revelations that I'm having right now thanks to the, the the Holy Spirit just guiding me, showing me, teaching me. That is his job, right? That is his function. And it's been really exciting. And I can't wait to see what, what divine opportunities start popping up and all that. But yeah, for that first hour though, I was praying about the situation and I ask God, just show me how I should be praying. Show me what I need to pray about. Give me the wisdom. Give me the discernment. Give me the revelation because I don't want anything negative. Like I choose to stop believing in the negative. I want to only believe in your power. There's only one power and it's you. And so many of us as people who associate with Christ, and are Christians, so many of us believe in the two in two powers of good and evil. We have this knowledge of good and evil. And the thing is, what was intended for us was life. Life and life more abundantly. It was life. We get everything, our wisdom, our discernment, love, peace, joy, righteousness, truth through Christ. 
And Christ is just one power. Good. Goodness. Perfection. Positivity. Everything positive. And so <laughs> I've recently realized that. Um, and I've also been reading this really good book. And um, uh, as well as studying the word, of course. And I, I have just come to realize there is no need for me to believe in the bad. That's not even the realm of reality that I live in now that I am saved and am a new creation and have been set in high places. Those things are not for me. I can observe what's going on in the world because I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. And these are the things that we have to remind ourselves about because I've been a Christian for a while, but the length of time you've been a Christian has no bearing on your level of Christian maturity. And many of us are still babies and drinking the milk when it's time for us to chew the meat. It's time to get to the meat and potatoes, you know, and I'm just, I'm so grateful that not only has God put me in a position to experience the wonders of his his miracles and his mercy and his grace, but that I'm also in a position to share it with you. And so I want you to stay tuned and hopefully I'll look better than this, but I, I literally like just woke up. So I still, I still got my headphones on from um, listening uh, to my subliminals overnight <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta wash my face and stuff yeah that like that's yeah this is definitely the start of my day and I have I've had um, a video on YouTube where I talk about tithing my day and this is what I do I give God the first fruits of my day not as a ritual right not a, 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 to do something that is legalistic I do it because I want to I want to spend time with him and he is my best friend. Now, my, my earthly best friend is my husband, but God is my best friend. And so I desire to spend time with him like I would any, you know, anybody else that I consider a friend. I want to spend time with him and he knows me so well and he's, he's not sitting in judgment of me and he wants me to open up to him and he wants me to see what he sees he wants to give me his vision. He wants to place me in the high places. He wants to use my life for something that will impact the rest of this world in a very positive way. But I have to be in alignment with that because my free will comes into play. And so, you know, God doesn't force himself on you. And this is part of why we also pray. Our free will is involved. Yes, he has the ability to do things. He has the desire to do things for you in your life. But you need to come to him in prayer to exercise your free will and let him know that this is what you want and ask for what you want and believe that you will get it. Believe that he hears you. And so this, I'm, I'm going to try to wrap this up, but just know that you don't have to function and operate in your life based on your emotions and based on this feeling of helplessness that you have power in the Lord. And when you go to him first, don't go to your mama, don't go to your husband, don't go to your, your friends, go to him. He should be your best friend. And when you go to him and you talk to him, Oh my goodness, you get such revelation. If you if you talk to him and you allow yourself to receive, allow yourself to be in alignment with his vibration and his his word, you will start to feel your emotions change. You'll start to be more open and receptive to goodness, grace, mercy. You will start to feel it and it activates in your life and it manifests into peace understanding and now I know there won't be an argument today in my household with my husband because I have released my burdens onto the Lord and set myself free so that now we can function and operate and when we talk it'll be a good it'll be a good talk 
So that's what I'm excited about. <laughs> that's what I'm looking forward to that when I was dreading earlier and feeling like, oh man, I'm going to go talk to my husband and I'm going to yell at him because I don't like he did this, this, this. I don't feel like that anymore. And it only took a pray, a prayer, a prayer. All I do is just pray. And it will regulate your mood so we don't have to function on an earthly plane. We can function higher than that. We can function instead of being in the natural, in the supernatural, above and beyond what's natural. And I don't have to nag my husband, yell at my husband, be mad at my husband. I get to see the Christ in him. I get to see the goodness in him. Instead of me being like, I don't like this or I don't like that. Or in my opinion, I feel like this. It's not really my business. <laughs> you know, um, things that he chooses to do is between him and the Lord. How I feel about it um, is is a is a consequence. It's it's a it's a you know when it's cause and effect. He caused something, and this is the effect of it. But we really need to focus on the root cause, and that is between him and God. So I prayed for him to be able to be open and receptive to the Lord's guidance in this area. And like I said, it's nothing major. It's really not the major. Maybe I'll reveal what it is later, but just to let you know, like that is my message for today, that it is so good. It is so important to cast, like go and pray. And prayer is simply having a conversation with God. We are not supposed to go out here. What is it? Matthew 6, 7, I think. Can't remember now, <laughs> but we're not supposed to go out here and be praying just to go and impress other people and show them how religious we are, right? I know God because watch how I pray. Oh, thou art this, the child, please. Our prayer is supposed to be a conversation that we have with someone that we're close to. There should be intimacy in our prayers and the prayers don't have to be an hour long. My prayer was an hour long about my husband because I was really hot, y'all. <laughs> I was hot. And then I realized, number one, it was not that big of a deal. And number two, it wasn't even, it, like, it wasn't my issue to be upset about. That's what the Lord helped me to see. And so then the second hour of my prayer was about other things that actually do concern me, that do involve me, that is my business. <laughs> like, that was really important. So I'm I'm excited that, you know, this is what it feels like to activate the power that you have through Jesus Christ, right? The, the power that he has bequeathed onto us. We have power. You don't have to feel helpless. You don't have to get emotional that you can actually operate on a higher plane than that. So super excited about that. And I just wanted to share that with you. And like I said, I might, I might come back and say more. Um, but I just, I feel like it's night and day with how I felt when I first got up and it was still dark in here to how I feel now that I'm done and I've spent a little time with the Lord and have been able to now, you know, continue on with the rest of my day. It's really exciting. So, um, that's pretty much it. But yeah, like I said, try to do that. Like, try to spend a little bit of time with the Lord. And like I said, I like to tithe. I give him the first fruits. So when I first get up is when I prefer to talk to him. But honestly, we, we meditate on his word day and night. We pray without ceasing, right? So that means we can have conversations with him throughout the day. Um, and plus it also means so much more deeper things too. You got to study the Greek and the Hebrew, the Hebrew and the Greek, right? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can get so deep into this, but I'll talk about it in other videos. But yeah, um, spend that time with him. Cause I'm telling you, it makes all the difference when you make the choice to be intimate with the Lord and stop worrying about what other people think about your relationship with him. Because people do that a lot. They do that with their marriages and their in their romantic relationships. Look how happy we are, y'all. Nobody cares. What is <laughs> what's more important is the intimacy and the bond and connection that the two of you have. Right. And I'm not saying 
you know, hide things from people and, 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 and be afraid and ashamed to share because I'm sharing with you right now. So that's not what I'm saying at all. But praying to spend time with God and to commune and communicate back and forth with the Lord is something that is so freaking important. And yet a lot of times we neglect it and we neglect him, but it's still okay because he still loves us and he'll wait. He'll okay. I'm here. I'm here to talk to, you know, and then you finally come to him and you talk to him and it's just, oh, the burden is released. You are free because he is the truth and the truth will set you free. And when you start learning and understanding more about the Lord, you start feeling so much better. It regulates your mood. It regulates your emotions. It regulates your body, your health, right? There's a, there's a, a verse in Proverbs that says that his word is life to all your flesh, which means bodily healing, life to all your flesh. Oh, child. Mm, I'm so excited. I, I, let me go start my day because I know it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a productive day. And I know I can look better than this. So I'm going <laughs> to... Because the Lord renews the youth like the eagles, right? And you become more and more beautiful the more time you spend with the beautiful Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'm going to go. I'm going to do my workout. I'm going to get dressed. I'm going to start my day. And I hope to see you again really, really soon. Bye.